Welcome to We Plus You, straight talk about conscious business collaborations. And I am very excited today because today I have a wonderful guest with me. We are, I have Carol Wayne, and what I love about her is she is the queen of reinvention. And I love the topic of reinventions because to me, reinventions is all about transformations. So welcome, Carol. Thanks for having me, Carly. Oh, I am very excited to have you because, as you know, it really is one of my favorite topics of all. It really is. It is one of the best topics. So I, what I'd like to start with is I know you have written at least one book. So can you share with us the title of the one book that I know you've talked about several times before? <laughs> I've written Guerrilla Tourism Marketing. And can you actually share with us, I, I've heard you talk about it actually in our own circles of conversations and I, um, and I love the title. Can you share with the, with the audience what exactly is that? Because that is an awesome title. I love anything with the title Gorilla in there. Yeah, it's actually part of the Gorilla Marketing family of books with Jay Conrad Levinson who's the father of Gorilla Marketing. And I wrote that book with him last year. And it's all about doing unusual things. It's not it's about creativity rather than big budgets for marketing. So that's what the book's about and it's all sorts of different ways to get your message out and it uses tourism examples and case studies to get the point across. And the reason why I brought up your book is because I believe that a lot of marketing is part of reinvention. A lot of people don't realize that reinvention isn't just typically about reinventing yourself and part of reinventing yourself does entail PR, publicity, also entails marketing. It does entail reinventing yourself as a person. And part of that is PR, like you said, guerrilla marketing. So that is one of the reasons why I wanted you to tell, tell the audience what the title of your book was. And I, by the way, I love Jay. He is an amazing human being. He is. He is. So, and, um, anyway, so anyways, I just wanted to, to tie that in. And so I would like to go from here is, I know you have an amazing reinvention story. So can you share with the audience where you started in your reinvention story? Sure. Um, I, I call it my 87 words that have caused me a lot of grief. <laughs> so I was uh, physically, emotionally, and, and psychologically abused as a child. And then I was an outcast without any friends for nearly two years after moving from Scotland to Canada at the tender age of 10. Then as a teenager, I was a bit of a rebel and I moved out um, at the age of 17 and I was raped by my roommate, which uh, really impacted me because I really liked and trusted him. And then, surprise, surprise, I was in a dysfunctional marriage with a, with a daughter when I was in my 20s. And then I built up a really successful business only to see it implode in a perfect storm in 2009. So I've, I've had my, my childhood story, my teen rebel years, and even my early 20s when, when I was in that dysfunctional marriage. And then when I left and went to work on myself as a single mom, then everything changed. And it's because I said stop. Stop, you're not hurting me anymore when I was a child. Stop to my roommate, I'm moving out. Like, that was not cool what you did. <laughs> Stop to, uh, to my ex-husband. And, yeah. yeah, I just said stop, and then I figured out what I wanted and went from there. What would you say, though, was the pivotal moment? I know you said the word stop, but there's something usually, as you know, I also grew up with verbal, sexual, and physical abuse. There usually is, is a moment within the word stop that literally is the catalyst for everything. So what was it for you, do you think, that was the moment before stop that was the catalyst? Or, you know, what was it for you, do you think? Well, when I was little, I don't remember much of my childhood, and apparently that that's not unusual. <laughs> um, so before when I moved to Scotland, there's uh, from Scotland to Canada, there's very little that I remember. But I do remember just being so freaking lonely. You know, I, here's this kid with this funny accent, and I was I was not allowed to fit in. I had to be home after uh, after school within certain 
number of minutes because my mom had gone and figured out how long it would take me to get home. And I just said, no, that's it. I'm not doing it anymore. Now, with my, with my marriage, um, it was a lot easier because now I had a little girl. And I remember sitting there at the park with her one day, and I just went, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this for her. So it really was that was it like I, I, I talk about this in, in my book and I'm like I was sitting there I was watching her play and I don't know where it came from it just went stop like this is it enough time out <laughs> like, yeah now, actually what you said is quite powerful that's very common I think a, a lot of people that have been abused or been in that space when they have a child that usually is a catalyst I know, I know for me, and what you, what you did say about not having the memories at, before childhood, that is very common. Uh, I actually have very, very little memories of before I was in sixth grade. Although I have some of the real pivotal, huge moments I do remember of the huge acts, I don't remember a lot. A lot is quite fuzzy. So that yes, you're right, that is quite common. And I've heard over and over again, that yes, when you have a child, that usually is a huge catalyst because now you have another person that you're responsible for that you genuinely care about, and now you have something bigger than you, and that usually is a catalyst to want to get out or and change your life to something better. Absolutely. I mean, even if you wouldn't do it for yourself, now you have to do it for someone else. So that... <laughs> that's cool. And if you could give tips to somebody else who's in that situation, what would be like would you say what would you say to somebody else that are is in that situation what would be the very first thing that you would say to that person would be the first thing that they should do and, I, and as you know I, I don't like the word should what would be something that they could do if they're in a in a in an abusive stop. situation and like you said you had that moment where you said stop so what would you say to that person what, would be, what could they do to make the first step in changing their life to do the reinvention Talk to someone, confide in someone, have someone that you can go to, because when you're ready to leave, you got to go somewhere. Um, what I would recommend, because <laughs> I'm I'm practical, is make sure you've got your ducks in a row as far as your you've got you're gonna have money <laughs> when you move out, and just make sure that you're ready to go. And depends how abusive the situation is. Like when I left, my marriage wasn't abusive um, it it was dysfunctional but it wasn't physically abusive so I was never scared for my life I was just fighting <laughs> and drama and all sorts of stuff so when I left it wasn't for my life in a physical sense but it was for my life going forward so what I would say is please just figure out First of all, figure out that this is something that you want to do. Confide in someone, get your ducks in a row, and then leave. And don't go back. Because I went back so many times before I had my daughter. Yeah. And so what I would add to that is if, if you are in a situation that is violent and is, like, like she said, uh, something that what she wasn't going through, but it is something that's dangerous and where you could have your life, is make sure that you go to some place that is safe whether it be a church or a police station, find someone that you trust and is safe. Uh, in my situation, it was for my life, and I did wind up having to, I did go to a church, and I did wind up calling the police, and so yes, may, if it is for your life, you make sure you go someplace safe. Do not put your child or yourself in danger, and usually when it is that type of situation, that person is much more hypervigilant, and they're watching you very, very closely. Yeah. So yes, make sure you, 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 and a lot of times people don't have the money. So you're in a situation where you don't have the money to leave and it is your life and your child's life, get out anyway and go someplace where it's safe and someone that you trust. So, and um, I wish anyone that's in that situation, um, you know, a lot of strength and, and the strength to get out. And so Carol, what I, where I'd like to go from here, I just wanted to put that out there for people because I really... I really, I really have sympathy and I really have compassion for people that are in that situation. But I, you are the queen of reinvention, so I really want to get back to some tips and not, I don't want to take this whole, you know, interview into about abuse and verbal abuse and sexual abuse or physical abuse. I want to get this back also to reinvention of people that want to reinvent their lives, 
whether it be their life or in their business, because to me they're interconnected. I think that when we're failing in our business, we're also failing in our life, and when we're failing in our life, we're failing in our business. So let's talk about reinventing our life to start, because I really think that they're really, like I said, interrelated. So what are some tips people can take to reinvent their life and I'm going to say that for right now, the analogy or the preframe is as we're talking about reinventing our life, we're also talking about reinventing our business. Mm -hmm. So what are some tips people can do to take to start? Let's, let's, let, let's lay out three steps to reinvention. Okay. Well, actually, I have five. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay, let's lay out five steps for reinvention. <laughs> the first one we've already talked about is stop doing whatever it is that no longer works for you. You've just got to say stop. Then the second part, and this is really difficult for for some people, is what do you want? Like When I was working with my coach, she said to me, Carol, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and she goes, well, how are you going to get it if you don't know what you want? So for, for me, we worked backwards. And we said, uh, what do what don't I want? And then we flipped it around to say, okay, this is what I do want. So stop, know what you want, take a stand for yourself, then set your boundaries, and then take massive action. And where I see a bunch of waffling is, is w with the boundaries. Some people get really far and, and they're going for it and then they They've taken the stand and they put down these boundaries and because the people that they're dealing with aren't used to these boundaries, there's a lot of, of pushback and then if they let those boundaries down, and it's not going to work because people will step all over you <laughs> and, and push down your boundaries unless you're, um, you're really vigilant and you, you stick with them. I liken it to uh, when you're training a dog, for example, <laughs> and I know we really shouldn't talk about our friends and family as, as if they're animals, but when, you, when you're training a dog, it's always no. It's not sometimes no and sometimes yes, otherwise the dog is confused and then you'll never train the dog. So with people, it's the same. If, if I do not want for you to treat me in a certain way, it always has to be do not treat me that way. Well, I will take that too. When you're training a child, I mean, yeah. I don't, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's wrong. To, you're using the analogy of a dog. When you have a child and they're little, if you don't reinforce the child and saying no, I mean, there are other ways to train a child than either the saying the word no. You can reinforce them positively. Mm -hmm. However, you're right. You have to consistently tell a child something. It doesn't have to be the word no. It can be whatever word you want to use. However, if you're not consistent, I don't care what word it is, if you're not doing something that's consistent, they're going to get the wrong message and they're not going to be trained. So whatever word you want to use, whether it's positive reinforcement or it is the word no, you have to be consistent or it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. and so I agree with you. Yeah, sometimes the word no is the most appropriate. Right, whatever it is, but I agree with you. It has to be something that's consistent. Yeah. I have two girls. So I learned all of this. Oh, instead of don't run, it's remember to walk. Walk. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> right. I hear you. <laughs> so, uh, and then the other part about reinvention is I call them the quadruplets of dissatisfaction, and these are the four traits that um, reinventionists uh, have. They are the victim, and some they don't always show up all of the time, but they do show up most often some of the time, and that's the victim and the fraudster, which would be like the imposter syndrome, and the hypocrite, and then the saboteur. And Ooh, I love the saboteur. The little monkey mind, the little conversations of, oh, you can't do that. You're not good enough. Yeah. You, you, know, you can't do that right now. Yeah, I, lo I love the saboteur. The saboteur is an amazing little monkey that sits on the shoulder. Ooh. Oh, and when the saboteur and the victim get together? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Oh, the, the victim. Oh, I don't feel good. I don't want to get out of bed. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you just have to, when we're reinventing, we have to know that these little gremlins, these little quadruplets of dissatisfaction are going to pop up. And you're just like, yeah, go away now. <laughs> Go, go find the sock in the laundry because you know you're you're not helping me today. Now were those? And now I'm trying. So can you rattle off them again? Okay, so it's victim, and fraudster, and hypocrite, and saboteur. Okay. Now rattle off. Have we gone through the five? The five. Uh, you said you had five tips for reinvention. Yes. Yeah. It was stop. Know what you want take a stand, set your boundaries, and take massive action. Okay, so now I'm going to add one more to this because you've just been going through this whole program about stretching yourself. I think a really huge thing about reinventing your oneself is also doing something that you're doing right now, is putting yourself in a program where you have someone that holds you accountable. If you're going to reinvent yourself, if you don't have a partner that's willing to hold you accountable, you're going to have a really hard time reinventing yourself. So make sure you find someone that's a, a buddy that's willing to hold you accountable and stretch yourself. Do things that you would not normally want to do. And as, for example, Carol's been doing this. She's been in a wonderful program where she has an accountability partner and they're doing mastermind calls and they're doing all these wonderful things. And she was just in a wonderful well, you can share this, but you were in a wonderful 30-day blog challenge or something like that, and I, I don't know what you're doing. You can you, you can share all that. The, you know, the point is we need to hold ourselves accountable, and it's really hard to hold ourselves accountable if we don't have anyone else to share that with. So why don't yeah. you share some of that? Well, the 30-day the challenge that I took in January was for video. It was a 30-day camera shy to super fly with Michelle Holmes, and on the 31st of December, if you had told me that I would have my own show and that I'd be sitting here talking to you on video and not being all nervous, I would not have believed you. <laughs> but I did that challenge and it was there was an accountability component to it. So we every day we had to create a video and we had to post it. And when I look at my very first video on New Year's Day, it is awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. <laughs> awful but what's really cool is as the time went on throughout the month I could see how I'm leaning in and I'm I'm being more animated and being more self uh, more of myself so that was really cool for me to do that and I recommend you know if if videos your thing <laughs> do, do something like that too right now I'm doing the 30 uh, 30 days of comfort zone stretches. So <laughs> I, just, I went on my husband's motorbike the other day. I mean, for some people, they've been like, that's not much of a stretch. But it's been nine years since I've been on the back of that motorcycle. <laughs> so that was a big stretch for me. Apparently, I'm also going tubing, quadding, shooting a rifle, horseback riding, and walking through the seaweed where the crabs are with my sister. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Good for Carol. And, and, uh, and a friend of mine just did a 30-day blogging challenge. I mean, I just find it it's really important for everybody to do something that you're stretching yourself. Yeah. Whatever it is, you've got to do something out there that's going to stretch yourself. I think that is a huge one for reinventing yourself. Because if you, if you don't do something that's going to stretch yourself, you're not going to, you're not going to stretch yourself. And if you don't stretch yourself, you sure as heck aren't going to want to reinvent yourself. Yeah, because reinvention does require a leap stretching. of faith, huge amount of stretching, and you have to trust yourself. So I think this, even though I've been reinventing myself for as long as I can remember, just doing this stretching challenge, a part of it is challenging to come up with the stretches to do, <laughs> but even to do them and just go, you know what, that wasn't that scary after all. And it, and it could be something as simple as eating something that, ooh, I don't want to eat that. Something, you you know, you're a child, you didn't like it. You never know. As an adult, you may love that food. You just don't know. And that's the funny part. You, some things that we have in our head that we're afraid of, when you were a child, it's a very different thing than as an adult. It's an irrational fear. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the great thing about being in those stretching programs because it really is. It's um, I've done so many programs, warrior programs and wizards programs, and I bent a metal bar with my throat 
Like, you know, you put the metal bar and right here in the center of your throat, and the other person has a metal bar on their throat, and you, you have to walk towards each other. And in your wildest mind, you're going, no way, no way. And people are freaking out, and they're crying. And you just commit to doing it. You do it, and the, this rebar bar just bends. I mean, I've walked across fire. I mean, you know, and it's an irrational fear in our brain, these things that we do that we freak out over. So, you know, I, I think... I think there's all sorts of things that we could do and challenge ourselves with, and I think it's an amazing thing. And I, I give you tons of credit for doing this. I think it's really great. I mean, the fact that you're here having this conversation with me, according to you, you're going to make it as a stretch. So I don't know. <laughs> did you make this a stretch? It is a stretch because I'm used to <laughs> Yay! Because as the audience doesn't know, as Carol's been interviewing people like, I don't know, how many interviews have you done so far, Carol? Over 30. Okay, so Carol's doing this. Okay, yeah, this is a perfect time for you to talk about the Women's Reinvention Summit. So Carol's running a Women's Reinvention Summit September, so 20th. run with this. Yeah, September 20th, 21st, and 22nd, and it's virtual. And you will be one of my master presenters. Why, thank you. So anyway, so she's been interviewing people. So she's done 30 interviews so far. However, Carol hasn't really been interviewed in video format. I'm sure you've done some podcasts, correct? I've done one. <laughs> okay, so this was a stretch for her to do a video interview. She was like, huh, what, why? <laughs> so, so she decided to make this video interview one of her stretches. So kudos and woohoo to Carol for doing this. Thank Yay, you. another Thank stretch. You. And yeah. more and many more and more and more to come. So I'm very proud of you. Thank you. So no. anyway, so yeah, so I'm really excited about the Women's Reinvention Summit. So we would love to have you join us, and there will be links coming out. As a matter of fact, I will be putting up a graphic in the back end of this, which will have the website, which, by the way, can you share with us the website? Ooh, it's a really tough one to remember. It's womensreinventionsummit.com. <laughs> ooh -hoo. So I'll actually have the link to that. Um, we'll, I'll be putting together a blog with this, and we'll have the link to the Women's Summit as well. We'll have the link for it directly in the blog. I'll also have an embedded video of this. I'll have the embedded podcast of this. You'll hear Carol's voice a lot. And um, I'll also have links to everything. And, yeah, we'll have everything all, all nice and neat and tidied up for you. I know, I'm so it's been an absolutely delight having you. I'm so I'm so happy you joined me. Thank you very much. I know we Is could there talk anything forever. else that you just absolutely would love to share? Well, I've also interviewed you for the reinvention show, which is when I talk to people. Uh, the episodes come out every Monday, and I talk to people about their own reinvention stories and what they learned along the way. So that's a little bit different than the Women's Reinvention Summit. And so if any of your viewers are looking to reinvent, they should head on over to thereinventionshow.com and take a look at the different episodes that are there. Yes, I'll have the links for that as well. So yes, you can find, you'll, you'll, I'll have the links to any, you, believe me, you'll be able to find Carol anywhere with my blog. There will be links to everything Carol. So, yeah, she has a wonderful show that um, she, all the interviews from all these different people that she's been interviewing for the past, I don't know, two months now, right? At least two months. She's been interviewing and interviewing and interviewing and interviewing. So, and I'm going to have her again. I'm going to keep on stretching her. This, I'm going to be calling her on for an interview like once a month to stretch her more and more. I'm actually going to do an interview with her after the Women's Reinvention Summit. So she can share her experience of having done, this is her first re reinvention summit. So she's going to share with us what that was like to actually run a summit. And that will actually be a really cool thing for other people to understand what it takes to actually, I'm going to have her walk through what it takes to actually put together a summit, what it was like to run a summit, and then what it was like to run a post-summit. Because actually people have no idea what it takes to put one of those things together. So are you on for that interview? Absolutely. Perfect, because I, I know what you've been going through, so I can't wait to have the interview for people to understand, because I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who don't know what it takes to do that. So I think it would be a perfect interview to share with people. If anyone else is interested in actually knowing what it takes to do one, I think it would be a perfect thing for people to hear about. So as usual, I love hearing your feedback, because feedback is how as I grow, and if there's anything in particular that you'd love to learn about, please let me know. And it's been wonderful spending some time with you. 
for tonight, I leave you, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. You've been with me, Carla Thorne. You can find me at CarlaLissaThorne.com, and you've been with Carol Wayne, and you can find Carol Wayne at, Carol, where can we find you? CarolWayne.com. W-A-L-N. Thank you so much, guys. It's been wonderful. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wonderful night, everyone.